Welcome everyone to another edition of D Side Stories. This is our hip hop edition part two. And our boy Seth is away again. Not that he doesn't like hip hop, just Seth happens to be gone this week. And this gives me a chance to reconnect with a very good friend of mine and recording artist here in Chicago. I want to welcome Jealous to the studio. Jealous, how are you? Man, I'm great. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, we've been waiting to do this interview with you for a long time. And I want to tell our audience about us <laughs> you and i it's not a it's not a sketchy story um jo- jealous and i met and if i can say your name jonathan is that okay of course <laughs> uh but i'm gonna call you by your by your artist name here so it's much cooler jealous and i met about probably four years ago and I was telling him I was a struggling entrepreneur doing Mesh and Bone, which is this alcohol brand you guys have probably heard about uh, me talking about here and there. And Jealous was an up-and-coming hip-hop artist. And we promised each other that we would help as much as we could both of our careers. And I went off to New York and then to Mexico. And then coming back, we got a hold of each other and subsequently... Jealous has been working with me on Mesh and Bone to help promote the products, uh, especially here in Chicago. Uh, and it has just been a pleasure, Jealous, to, to have you on the show, as well to just see all your progress. So first and foremost, congratulations on all your success. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and what did you think when you first met? I mean, I, my hair is kind of that Jesus length. Uh, it was clean, uh, I hope. <laughs> not, not really my body, but at least my hair wasn't too nappy. Um, you know what, man? I was, hey, I was focusing on the conversation. I won't worry about the hair. <laughs> well, well, Jealous, tell us a little bit about yourself your, um, and, and, and your work. And, and really, that's what we want to get into tonight. Um, by the way, um, I'm from south side of Chicago. Um, born and raised. I've been into hip hop for a long time, but I started actually rapping, I want to say about four years ago. And I developed this skill just sitting around trying to figure out something to do. And I told myself, you know what? Let me try to, let me try to um, make a song and see if this could take me far. And you know that's what I did. I um, sat around and made 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 about two three songs, and I sent it to my buddies, and that was it. You know, I I, I took it to a whole nother level. Um, well, jealous. What was the the moment when you realized that this is something you wanted to do more than just maybe an initial feeling of like, Hey, I'll, I'll write a song. What was that like? Um, it was, it was a scary feeling because I knew once I put my mind to it, I knew I was going to have to put my all into it. And that means financially, um, making sure the mindset, right. You know, just, um, dedication, loyalty to the, to the industry, you know, so, I had to just set in my ways and, you know, put a couple of things to the side and focus. And what was your first song? My first song was Dreams, actually. Um, Appropriately titled. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, Dreams. It was the first song I ever wrote. Um, it was me introducing a young lady to my city. And, you know, just showing her the um, extravagant way that that's in Chicago, you know, just showing all the great things that's in Chicago, the luxury stuff, you know, so. Definitely. And as your music progressed, what what has inspired you to write your, your content that you write? Just my everyday life. Um, just, you know, just being out and. Knowing I got a 
you know, work a nine to five, it makes me put all the music and all the, I mean, where well, all the thoughts into the music because I want to be in a better situation. What does that mean? Well, what type of situation Meaning, do you want to be in? <laughs> I guess that would, would help. Um, More so like famous, want people to know my stories, want people to know my background and how I came from nothing to going to something. What what do you really want them to know about you? Is is it your perseverance or uh, your struggle? What exactly, if you had to pinpoint it to just a couple words? Mostly it'll be the struggle. And like um, just knowing like where I come from, what I'm trying to go, where I'm trying to go to, the grind, you know, just hustle. Just to have, a, you know, more so like a, I want to say a greater life, you know, just a different lifestyle. I hear you. In terms of this struggle, what what do you want people to get out of it when, when they hear your music and they see your videos, which you can see on YouTube and other other channels? And we'll get into that. Um, but what do you want them to feel? I will. I, my preference, I would want them to just know that anything you want to go out and get, just focus on it, you know, just put your all into it. I definitely can, can feel that. And I follow jealous on your Instagram and, and other social media accounts. And I'm always amazed at how optimistic you are and, and not saying you have stuff to be pessimistic about, but uh, to be, uh, to be optimistic every day is, is difficult in today, especially in today's world. And especially in Chicago. Uh, how how do you stay so positive? You know what? It's the kids. When you think about how much stuff you want to do for your kids, how much, you know, a difference you want to make in their life besides the normal life that they have, you know, certain things that um, a nine to five can't buy, you know, so it makes me go harder. You know, it makes me take the music to another level. And how do you translate that in the music? Is it, uh, you, are you writing more? Are you, you know, looking at different beats? How, how does, how can we feel that passion? Well, every day I'm checking out new beats. Um, it just is me putting, you know, a lot of thought into everything that's going on around me, everything that's surrounding me. It makes me go and find an instrumental and say, okay, let me put this to the beat. Let people be able to relate to my stories. And how would, it, just how would you describe your, your music as opposed to um, some of the other hip-hop artists in, in Chicago that our audience would know, you know, such as Kanye and, and um, Twister, you know, some of the other Chicago acts that have been around a, a while. How how would you describe yours as compared to theirs? Um, compared to theirs, um, I would I would actually say it's the same because we all go through, you know, some of the same walks of life. It just, you know, we kind of our rhymes are different. But far as the comparison, um, I feel like we all kind of been through the same, you know, the same thing, you know, just being in Chicago and knowing the struggles and knowing how you want to get from one place to another, you know, so. And would I you believe, say, that, you know, huh? Yeah. Would you say that's the same for, you know, in general hip hop? Would you describe that as a more of a hip hop, you know, kind of like in the blues? A lot of the blues came from hardship and sorrow. It, it was a music to express that pain. Uh, with many different lyrics and and uh, and instrumentals, but is hip hop the same in that way? Yeah, it pretty much is because everybody, you know, um, write their music off what they go through, and a lot of people come from the struggle, you know. So that's where all the pain and the excitement come in at. And what the, the, the fascination with luxury, 
Um, a lot of the videos they show artists with uh, luxury brands, either you know cars or actual stacks of money. Uh, what what are these cues? Why are they so prevalent? Um, because that's what makes the viewers happy. Oh, okay. If people if if people see you with all this extravagant stuff, they want to view your music. They want to be like you. They want to follow in your footsteps. So when you show it, you letting them know, like, yeah, it could be done. Got it. So it's a very uh, cool, a, like aspirational. You know, people want to aspire. They want to see these cues of sick of visible success. Of course. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> well, now I, that, yeah, now, go ahead. Sorry, buddy. No, you know, nowadays everybody wants the fast life, you know, when it's, especially when it comes to music. You know, they feel like that's that's the takeoff for a lot of people. It, if you can express yourself and, and, and put it to a song and everybody want to listen to it, you know, you go. And that's like a missile. It takes straight off. So these cues of aspiration, luxury goods, cars, clothes, it, it sounds like that's the way uh, when people envision getting out the struggle, that, that's what they, that, what they want to get. Um, I think it's it, besides them having them luxury cars and, you know, having all the money, it just it's just still another way to get where they need to be. Now, bringing it out and showing it, that's what that's what's going to keep you relevant. Got it. That's that's it's fascinating. And, you know, for, for a lot of our or some of our listener base that are don't, not very familiar with hip hop or just like myself have been a peripheral fan, kind of seen videos and, and, and whatnot. What would you describe as the, like, the soul of your of your music? Like, what? It's um, you talked about the struggle, but what's your core message? My core message would be, mm, I want to say, just um, none of my music is fabricated. You know, everything is off me my everyday thing it's just my feelings any all the ups and downs all the people that you think that's gonna be there for you they not there you know um no no one want to you know sit by your side and go through the mud with you and you know just stick with you you know everybody just in it for just the the, the fame and so, for example, someone like uh, Kanye West, who I, I believe came from, uh, I think it was Rainbow Park or somewhere in the South Side. Wh yeah. how, when you see him in, in his fame and with the Kardashians, uh, is his music still relevant to those in South Side Chicago, you know, kind of where he's from? Or is his lifestyle so different now? Does it affect his music? No, it doesn't. You know, a lot of people love him because he's from Chicago. So no matter what type of music he put out, he's still going to be um, Chicagoan. You know like what I'm a, saying? A, yeah, like a loyalty to, yeah. to the hometown it's, it's hero. It's always going to be there. No matter where you go, it's still going to be Kanye West. But when, you, when you're talking about the struggle, I, I don't... I think maybe his struggles are different now. I mean, he's in luxury homes and, and he's got the mansions. He's got everything that, um, you know, someone may be aspiring to get, but, you know, material wise. Uh, and I just was curious uh, for, for even myself and in, in the entrepreneur game where we're still in the struggle. Uh, if you see those people, if they've lost something in a way, you know, because, you see it in rock music all the time. Their music starts right. to just suck because they don't have that that push or passion or anger. Mm. You know, so it's hard to be uh, it's hard to write if you don't have that 
drive behind you because I guess you've, you've made it. Yeah, but that's when you start talking about other things that go on in your life. You don't, you already done graduated now. <laughs> You're talking about like uh, which therapist you go to or which uh, guru or spiritual advisor. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well in, t- in terms of your where where you're uh where you're at now jealous what are your you started off with dreams um i've loved a lot of your tracks uh like true colors and that really were about relationships and that's something you you sing and rap about a lot of course and uh, uh, um you know with my music, you know, I just, I pretty much take my time. And, you know, I think out a lot of my music. Um, so whichever, you know, like True cover, true Colors for a prime example. Um, I was just pretty much going through a sad situation. You know what I mean? And sometimes, you know, females, they get ahead of themselves. So you have to, you know, pull them back a little bit. That's a global, a global issue. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. So you, had, you had, and I love the video, and uh, we're gonna put the video on our YouTube channel and in our uh, social media, and and you and I would would always joke about it because I I too, even though I'm not a, a hip hop artist, I could relate to a lot of the situations that you had shown on your video. Right. <laughs> It's and, and essentially it's a woman that wants to move too fast in a relationship. Am I, is that right? All the time. And jealous. What's next? Uh, what's next for you? What What are the next uh, avenue for you? My next steps is just more networking. You know, trying to find the 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 open door. You know what I'm saying? I I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep grinding, keep hustling, keep putting out music. By the way, um. I'm actually shooting a video next month. Um, so I, I think this is the one. I'm sure it, it will be, buddy. And, and you know, I'm there rooting for you. In, in terms of this stage of, of your career, uh, and it's something you and I talked about, it, it, it sounds like it's more of a marketing game than actual music. Is that correct? I mean, you, you have obviously two parts. You got to make the music and then promote it. But it sounds like the promotion part is is, is the most difficult. Yeah, you hit it on the money. It, um, it takes for you to, you know, meet some of the right people. And if you don't, you know, sometimes you got to come out your pockets, triple than what you think. So and with how, me. Yeah, go ahead. So with me, I feel like I'm just going to, you know, take a different route, keep networking, keep putting out good music and my time will tell. Are there others, um, artists in Chicago uh, that is there a community that you guys help each other in terms of promotion or is it kind of lone wolf? Um, It's pretty much isolated. Um. If you don't know too many people or, you know, hang out in too many groups, then you're pretty much on your own. So is that something that's like, yeah, would you want to see a community? So, for example, with artists, uh, actual, you know, painters or even poets, they they form these uh, support groups, if you will, to to help each other uh, make it in in many ways. So it sounds like in, in, in Chicago, at least, it's more of a kind of like a startup entrepreneur. It's kind of a uh, dog eat dog, if you will. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Very, comp- very competitive. Very competitive. It, you got, you got some people want to see you win, but you know, others don't. So when you do try to link, it seems like don't nobody get on the right page. Cause once you do something that's great, it's like the other person just, end up disappearing and you'd be like what have i done it's because (laughs) yeah it it gets like that it gets like that so it jealous in in chicago you've been a lifelong resident and i'm i'm a a transplant somewhat recent transplant 
Chicago gets a lot of press about the violence and the almost like not urban decay, but like downtown decay. Uh, how do you see it coming? I'm on, I don't know, the west side. You're, you're on the, the south side. Do you, do you, is that reflected in some of the, the art and the music that you're writing? I think it's, I think it's mostly about um, parents not caring for their kids. They, you know, they, they let them off the leash too early. It is not even really about the music. It's just that the kids is just getting out too early. They growing up too fast. It is crazy. It's just that you, we, you know, so many people in the States, when I tell them I live in Chicago, they're, Oh my gosh, it's such a dangerous city. There's shootings all the time. And, and to, to be you know, quite, you know, just transparent, the, the neighborhoods that in the South side, um, they get a lot of the, the brunt of that publicity, you know, and I don't really know if it's true or not because I, I don't live there. Um, and I just didn't know how that affects your perspective and how you, what ins- what's inspiring you to write, you know, is, are you including that? I know uh, growing up in, in the LA basin, it affected so many of the hip hop artists uh, like right. NWA and Dr. Dre. They just were writing about what they see around them. And, um, they, and it was very powerful. And I didn't know if that was something that was also inspiring you. Well, you know, it is different strokes for different folks because, um, I'm different, you know, I don't go off what goes on in the streets. I just pretty much go off of my lifestyle and how I'm living and where I want to become, you know what I mean? So it's kind of hard for me to write about them type of situations. And plus I stay away from them situations. So <laughs> that's a good thing, man. We want you alive. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, I know. I think it's, uh, you've taken a different approach and that I, I noticed that too. When I started to really engage with her music, uh, that, that and, I, and it was very relatable to me. Jealous, I thought, especially about a lot of your songs about relationships. Uh, I think that if you're not even a fan of hip hop or whatever, I really want to encourage our audience to 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 really listen to your to your music. And I, I found it so relatable, as if you and I were old pals, and you knew my ex girlfriends, <laughs> you, you knew what I was going through, and in fact, you do. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joe, what message do you have for any of the uh, our audience base that you know wanted to get to know you better in your music? Uh, what would you direct them to? What what songs? What what videos? Um, my first preference would be at the top. I really love that song. Um, the visual. Um, outside in Chicago, snow coming down. It was, it was, it was, it was winter time. I did that below zero. (laughs) And we know what that's like. Oh man, it was tough, man. (laughs) Um, with that song is, is when you at the top, they find a way to love you. I really believe in that, you know, um, once when you down, Everybody just sitting to the side watching. Nobody really vouching for you. But once you get to the top, now everybody just, they right there. They holding on to your shoulder, acting like they did something they didn't. So that's that's one of my main songs that I love. You know? So Jealous at the Top really sh- explains a lot about how I felt, too, with Mesh and Bone. Um, and you and I talk about that a lot. And that's one of the how we really, you know, became friends. We had these very similar situations, uh, especially still being in the struggle. And I can honestly say I am very much in the struggle. Uh, and and that's something that I think um, when I heard your music, I, I could I could also see that. Uh, and so I thought your your songs had a lot of wisdom behind it. So I just want to say I really enjoyed that. So what 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 other songs do you have at the top, and what would be next for for our audience? Um, I will say my next song, up and running, would be struggles. Yeah, that 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 now that's my track. It um. 
it gives me the vibe of when you down and you just finding a way to just grind it out. You you like a you like a dog trying to get out the dog house. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. That's that's my daily life. <laughs> you know, it's just just trying to find a better way. You know, and it and it like I said, it's doing it for the kids. I feel like I want my kids, kids to be straight, you know. And that's where that song came about. That's where that anthem came in. It was all about let's hit another level with this one. Well, know, it, so. it, 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 I think what I admire and I really encourage our, our listeners to um to really take a hard uh look at this is that universal concept of of struggle and i i admire your optimism jealous i i see it every day and i i just want to tell our viewers i i really encourage you to, to follow jealous's social media accounts because um despite all the stuff that's happened in, in your neighborhood, Jealous. I, I, I admire your strength. And uh, I just wanted to let our, our viewers know that um, I've been down, you know, to those areas when I used to actually taste out product. And, uh, mm-hmm. I, and when I read your messages, even though you, you may say you're as, aspiring to get to that place, to me, it sounds like you've, you've already made it. Your, your optimism is, is so captivating and, and, and um, contagious. So, th- so I, I, I just want to say and pause and say, thank you, man. <laughs> oh man. No problem. No problem. <laughs> so likewise. The, yeah, <laughs> totally. So w- coming up next, is, is there a song in the works that you could give us a little preview about? Of course. This um, next song, I really don't have a name for it, but I have a concept. Actually, is um, it, it, it's more to, it's more so like a, a strip club song. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. What's going on? Wait, I, Seth, 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 Seth may call in back for this. Hold on. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, so enlighten it, us, jealous. Tell us what this is about. <laughs> this is this this is a summertime hit right here. This is summertime smash. <laughs> uh, you know, it 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 is warm outside. All the honeys like dancing, so you know, I got I, I got that anthem for them. <laughs> uh, okay, and and where does the strip club fit in? That that's what I really want to know. Um, um, it's it's the instrumental. Okay, that's what that's what's gonna bring in the strip clubs. <laughs> you know that. Yeah, the, the the DJs, the the ladies, the honeys, the guys, they're gonna love this one. Well, you and I are gonna have to do some research and actually go to some of these strip clubs in the summer. And I I, I want to experience this firsthand. You know, I got you. No worries. <laughs> I want to meet Mercedes there and April Rain. <laughs> And Porsche on, and Porsche on stage too. Hey, put your hands together. <laughs> Oh, jealous. Well, listen, I, first of all, thank you so much for coming onto the show. I know Seth was very excited. He, he's heard so much about you as well as the larger mesh and bone team. Uh, but for D side stories, Seth and I just wanted to say, thanks again. You've been an inspiration to me personally. Uh, I always look forward to waking up in the morning and checking your account because you have a message that just puts a smile on my face. And I'm oh, going <laughs> to and I'm going to put these uh, your accounts and everything on our D side stories so people can follow you and they can learn more about you. And um, I just wanted to say thanks again. Uh, and I encourage everyone to check out Jealous on YouTube, Instagram and other social media. We'll put all that information down there so you don't have to worry about writing anything down. Um, but Jealous, thank you so much, buddy. Thanks for coming on the show. Man, I appreciate you. All right, buddy. We'll see you at the strip club. (laughs) (laughs) All right, everyone. We'll see you next week.